Ah, the Xbox 360 generation. This generation of gaming is one that I and many others consider to be the best generation of gaming and within good reason. There were many games that were released in this window that many consider some of the best games and franchises to ever be released. Some of these games include things like Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3, Bioshock, Bioshock 2, Bioshock Infinite, Halo 3, ODST, Reach, and Halo 4, Gears of War 1, 2, and 3, Red Dead Redemption, Portal, Grand Theft Auto 4 and 5, and so on and so on. But because of how easy it was to develop on the Xbox 360 and how much cheaper it was to produce games, we received a lot of shovelware and a lot of movie tie-ins. But amongst that large pile of trash, there were some diamonds in the rough. And so you're probably wondering why I gathered you all here today. And it's for one special reason. And that reason being 50 cent of blood on the sand. Yeah, I am not kidding here. This game ended up costing me $85 on eBay. And yes, don't worry. It is a complete in box. Of course, I would have it no other way. But why does it cost so much? Why does this game cost so much? Is it because of how hard it is to find? Is it because that it got delisted and there's no way you could possibly buy this online? Is it because as a part of the last batch of backwards compatible games that Microsoft ended up pushing towards was this game and the only way you could play it is through the disc itself? Or maybe it's because of places like DK Oldies who kind of turned the retro gaming scene into a shit show, just like as if someone who wipes from back to front and uh, someone else who probably wipes before they shit in order to save time. That's how bad the retro gaming market is right now. But it's not about why it is in the state it is. It's about whether or not this game was worth the price that I paid, which was $85. So I'm here to answer that question. Was it worth it? Well, let's talk about it. So this video is going to be just spoiler heavy. So if you haven't been able to get your hands on 50 Cent Blood on the Sand within the past, uh, give or take 14 years, well, then <laughs> you are sadly probably not going to be very interested in this video. So click off if you are not interested in any spoilers for this. But we got to talk about the story. So 50 Cent Blood on the Sand immediately thrusts you into this world and expects you to just accept this game, which is pretty much a fever dream. You, of course, play as Curtis 50 Cent Jackson. Talking about you, the king. <laughs> 50 Cent, a.k.a. Curtis James Jackson. My name is for people close to me, man. You don't call me that. Oh, since I can't call you that, I don't even know what to call you. Uh, I don't know. Something ridiculous like Mr. 50. I, I don't know. Is, is that even possible? Can I call you? Can I call you Mr. 50? Are you okay with that? I mean, feel like that would be so ridiculous to call 50 Cent Mr. 50. Testing Mr. 50. Can you hear oh. me? Okay, then I guess it isn't that ridiculous. So the game immediately starts off with 50 Cent, one of the biggest rap artists of all time playing at a concert and when i say the biggest i mean holy cow look at this beefcake this dude is ginormous he literally is the biggest rap artist of all time this is ridiculous i don't know if he motion capped this or if he said hey can you kind of inflate my muscles i know that he's a big dude but dang he's he's ripped in this video game so before i get sidetracked uh, let's go back to what the story is, which is 50 and G unit just finished a concert in Detroit and it's about time 50 got paid. So of course, when he goes to try to get paid, uh, they don't really have the $10 million that he is requiring in order to do this concert. Now I'm not a big multi-millionaire. I'm not a huge famous rapper, but even I know that maybe you should be getting your money up front or at least half now half later and the fact that you did a whole entire concert without being paid is uh, kind of ridiculous but this is a common theme when it comes down to 50 in this game is that 
he kind of looks over a lot of details and he's very easy going just a really chill guy and even though he might act hard deep down he really has a soft interior so of course what are you gonna do about that huh 50 are you gonna go and, and kill this guy are you gonna or what are you gonna do in order to get this 10 million dollars oh don't worry this guy actually has a means of payment he's, he's offering a diamond and pearl encrusted skull yeah call indiana jones because this adventure is getting really hot and so of course 50 is going to take that as payment because hey that seems like a fair trade and off to the airport to get out of compton so as you can see we're driving through the streets of compton and the best way to have a conversation and pass the time is to talk about how gangster you are and how gangster everybody here is hollywood pretty boy hollywood gangster queens baby that's where the real ogs live but while they're having this gangster contest, you find out that, you know what? There are RPGs heading straight for these guys and they get they just get blasted with assault rifle ammo. And they are just getting chunks torn out of them. And that's when I realized maybe this isn't really set in Compton. And uh, let me do some real quick Googling. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, okay, yeah. The game is set in an urban war zone in an unnamed Middle Eastern country where 50 Cent and G-Unit have been hired to play a rap concert. Wow. I thought we were in Compton. You could see why I might have been mistaken. So, of course, while they're in this confusion, a, uh, a, a, a female that is currently having a whale tail comes in and steals 50's prized skull. And this is where the game starts, and this is actually the whole point of the story, and that is 50 trying to get back that skull and, and going through any means necessary to achieve his goal. So in order to track down this Kamal figure that is a part of the reason why 50 Cent got ambushed, he has to go and he has to talk to a bunch of people who know a lot about Kamal's findings and his dealings behind the scene. And so he goes to a strip club owner who has beef against Kamal because he cut up his favorite girl. Yeah, this, this game writes itself. And so he tells them where to go in order to find Kamal. And the story is continuing. And I just got to say that this story just gets better and better as you play. And it gets more and more just ridiculous. And so... Next stop is the mall. Let's all go to the mall in the Middle East. Let's go to the mall in the Middle East. So after a short drive, you get to the mall and you battle through hordes of guys and you finally come across the guy that you're looking for, but you're a little bit too little, too late. And he is, gets away on a helicopter. But before he flies away, you get to see the transfer done and you see the diamond encrusted skull be dropped off to him. And now we have to follow him. And But you also get to see that maybe Layla and this guy don't really have the best relationship. And that might come into play later. But we also know he's a real badass because there's nothing more badass than the typical badass trope of shooting your own guys because you just don't care and because you're so badass. And this dude, if there's one thing, he's badass apparently. So on your way out of the mall, you find out that someone has hired mercenaries to fight against Kamal's guys, but they are also attacking you as well since they can't tell the difference between Kamal's guys and 50 Cent. I mean, there it's I guess it's pretty hard to distinguish them, but they go and they talk to the Anwar, who's the guy that owes 50 Cent in the first place, the $10 million for performing at the concert. And you find out that he's the one who's actually sending the mercenaries. And he was the one that actually called them in on the convoy. But for some reason, 50 Cent can't put these two things together. What the fuck, Anwar? You know these motherfuckers hit our convoy on the way here. No, I, I mean, no. Why would... It's funny how you seem so friendly with him. And understand that Anwar is trying to kill 50 and he is just kind of nonchalantly suggesting it but continuing on with trying to get that skull as if he doesn't care about Anwar trying to backstab him even though it's plain as day. So for the sake of prolonging this game even further than is necessary they decide to have 50 Cent 
actually meet up with the mercenaries leader and uh, they actually have a deal, a proposal of sorts in order for them to consider 50 cent saved he owes them and has to go steal some gold. <laughs> That's this is the story. I tell you, this is not, this is this this is pure gold. That's what this is. And so, of course, Fifty Cent agrees because he wants fifty percent of the millions that are there that are on the line here, and he is willing to do all of that. He's willing to put off trying to find Kamal and get his skull back in order to help these freaking dinguses here get four million dollars worth of gold now i'm not really good at math but i can tell you that 10 million dollars is a little bit more than four million and i don't think these mercenaries are going to help you in any way shape or form on getting towards that 10 million but for the sake of padding out a video game why not one of the highlights of this game is the conversations that you actually have between 50 cent and the g unit and they actually have some of the craziest things that they say come out of their mouth. Careful, Fifty. Come on, can be waiting for us through here. Let's go introduce ourselves. Knock, knock, motherfucker. What the fuck is that smell? Shit happens, Fifth. Are you telling me that a member of the G Unit shit his pants and it's just nonchalant about it just like hey man don't worry it happens we all do it well i'm gonna tell you <laughs> this is not a common occurrence and you should probably get this checked out so please don't act like this is a normal and if you shit your pants on a regular basis be sure to go to the doctor so you fight your way to go and get this gold and you finally and get it and guess what happens yep the mercenaries oh, betray you and they try to kill you and this is a very common theme moving forward that you should pay attention to because this is not the only time that this happens to 50. In fact, it happens with everybody that is involved with this game at some point is going to double cross 50 cent. And I am surprised he doesn't learn his lesson. But anyways, in order for you to stop the mercenaries from trying to kill you, you have to take down their helicopter. And this is the beginning of multiple helicopter boss battles that you'll see throughout the game and they are very tedious and uh very very boring they are just a boring part of these fights you'll be forced to play more of these helicopter battles what is crazy is that they even hire the pilot that is flying the mercenaries helicopter to continue to fly more helicopters later in the game i mean i'm all about a man getting money and and you know putting food on the table for his family but you gotta see his track record and understand that his track record really isn't the greatest and so finally 50 causes this helicopter to crash and he finds out where kamal is and that is where we're heading next so you end up going to kamal's palace this is where his fortress of solitude is at and this is where he's hiding out and you make your way to the front gates, but you realize we actually can't get into this heavy fortified location. So what is the best possible way to get in? I don't know, sneak in maybe. That might be good. Uh, disguises might be something that you might think of. No, in fact, this game is genius in its approach, which is let's get some prostitutes to distract them. Okay, yeah, I like where this is going. Okay, cool. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh my God, they just blew up the bus i can't believe that they would have been fine with just the the prostitutes but they had to take it a step further by blowing up the bus and alerting everybody to their presence and that they are pretty much calling them out like hey we are coming to attack your palace oh man that was a huge twist of events and i did not see that coming so of course after you make it through the palace and uh you make it to the rooftop where he's trying to make his escape on a, get this, a helicopter. You see him just fling Layla out <laughs> for no reason whatsoever. And uh, now you are engaged in another helicopter battle. Oh boy, I love these helicopter battles. Give me more. So after we take down Kamal and his helicopter, we go and we find out that Layla is actually only working for another person named Wilder because he controls her family and uh, 
Yeah, a huge twist, right? Well, guess what? We embark on a journey to kill Wilder because we need to get that skull from him. And so now we have a new villain that is just barely introduced into the story. And so we must go to where Wilder is. And we have to take a helicopter there. And guess what? Yep, we're going to be flying a helicopter. And at the end of this mission, we're going to be fighting another helicopter. That is the third mission in a row where you fight a helicopter as the final boss and <laughs> don't worry if you think that helicopters are are done now well there's there's still more to come and probably a, the biggest twist in any video game ever yep that's right that is bigger than Bioshock, Will You Kindly. That's bigger than Modern Warfare 2, Killing of Roach and Ghost. Bigger than Morden curing the Genophage in Mass Effect. The rest of the game is really just trying to get to Wilder and trying to get the Crystal Skull. And along the way there, you again encounter another helicopter. Yeah, that's right. That I, I have lost count at how many helicopters are in this game. Uh, and it, they're all battle the same exact way and well you finally get to the skull and once you grab the skull and try to make your way out of the palace guess what anwar is a backstabber how could you anwar i trusted you you were there from the beginning dude and yet you're out here freaking changing your mind and and backstabbing 50 i can't believe it in fact, all the signs were there. Everything was pointing towards this happening, and yet 50 is just such a nice guy. He just can't see these things. He, he Everyone's just taking advantage of him. Uh, so now you have to kill Anwar. Stupid asshole. He ain't stand a chance. Fuck him, 50. He made his choice. After you've taken care of Anwar, the next step is Wilder, of course, and uh, you make your way up to the top of the fortress where he is staying at and guess what yep there's a helicopter of course uh but that's not what we're focused on we're focused on the fact that hey we have wilder in front of us and it's time to get revenge for everything and give us that skull right well turns out no because he doesn't actually have the skull in fact the skull is now leaving the country and uh 50s kind of a little bit too late there and so he he gets a call from layla layla pretty much tells him you know what fuck you both and betrays both of them Oh my God, I can't take this anymore. There's so much betrayal going on. It's as if I'm watching a Game of Thrones season. And <laughs> yeah, yep, and 50 gets shot. Boom, game over. And that is the end of the game. Wow, that is really cool. Oh wait, no, he's not dead. And so of course these two henchmen are assigned to taking out 50 but because they can't shoot the side of a barn they miss every shot even though he's point blank and 50 easily takes him out and you know what this leads to another helicopter boss fight that i can't believe how many helicopter boss fights there are in this game but luckily this is the final one and we no longer have to deal with this any more now that wilder is finally taken care of now it's time for the next step which is to take care of leela and so uh you get behind the wheel and you have to go and try to catch up to her even though she had a huge huge head start of course you're able to uh catch up to her because you're 50 and she's not we're back in the driver's seat bitch and uh what do you do well you leave her out to dry in the desert and you drive off into the sunset with your prize the diamond and pearl encrusted skull all that for that one thing all that for 10 million dollars now that is a lot to do for $10 million. In fact, I wouldn't do any of that stuff for $10 million, but 50 would, he has to get paid somehow. And that is the story. Now, obviously the story is freaking jam packed of twists and turns and action and uh, great one liners, but it's not just the story that is great. It's also the gameplay that we have to talk about. The gameplay in this game is actually pretty fun. It is a very rewarding experience just because it is a very, just bombastic game it you have 
so many things at your disposal. You have a lot of weapons you could use. You have a lot of taunts that you could use. Uh, and these taunts, you can even buy more and use them more often. So that way, if you're tired of saying the F word, you could also throw in some other quips in there as well. You also have a cover system that is actually very poorly designed, in my opinion, and is a real waste of time. But uh, it is still cool that they try to implement themselves in, implement a cover system in this game. But the weirdest thing about it is that you're constantly going to have to be trying to not hit the A button because the A button is constantly popping up on your screen because you can take cover anywhere. And for some reason, they felt like it was necessary to constantly remind you that you could take cover, even though taking cover would probably lead to more deaths than it would actually be beneficial for you because enemies can still shoot you through walls. Uh, if you are in the process of reloading, if you move your character an inch, he will cancel the reload. If you try to pop out of cover while he's in a reload animation, it will cancel the reload. And so you're just stuck there until you fully complete the reload. Uh, it is a very obnoxious system because when you pop up, you don't really get a good you don't really get good sights on anyone and this causes a lot of frustration trying to get the angle on someone and it gets very frustrating to adjust your aim in order to try to kill these guys and so you might as well not even use it now i did play this game on the hardest difficulty and it was actually relatively easy this is not a hard game whatsoever in fact i like i said didn't even use cover for most of the game the hardest thing about this game is actually the co-op aspect to it yeah finding friends is the hardest part and uh, so I can't actually complete this game because I don't have a person that I know that actually owns this game. So if you are interested in playing co-op with me at some point, uh, I have my gamer tag down in the description block. Just shoot me a message on Xbox and we could definitely uh, tag team this game and try to get all those achievements. This game also has a very OP thing when it comes down to it, which is a bullet time that they call gangster fire. I swear I am not making any of this up. If you use Gangster Fire, it slows down time and allows you to pretty much get the aim on people. And I use this a lot and this actually helps a lot throughout the game and allows you to kind of pull off those shots a lot quicker and to uh, ramp up your score. You have a score at the end of the level, but the score doesn't really mean anything other than unlocks that you could use later, like concept art, uh, music videos, and cheats that you could also go back and, and utilize. Now, this game is definitely dated. It is definitely a game that is what makes the, the mid-2000s a really great and fun time. And it really does remind me of a lot of the great things that the 360 had to offer. This is truly a, a diamond hidden in the rough. And I cannot recommend this game more because I know that the story is ridiculous. I know that there is some jank when it comes down to some of the gameplay aspect, but this game is truly fun. And the dialogue from the taunts, the music is top notch because it is 50 cents own music. So if you're a fan of his, then you're obviously going to have a great time with the soundtrack, which is constantly playing. And I actually had to turn off because I couldn't listen to it or else, you know, wouldn't be able to play the video here. But this game is really, really fun. And uh, now it comes time to the fact that is it worth the $85? Now, I don't think you should ever pay more than retail for a game. So the fact that this game launched and it was at $60 when it first launched, I don't think that anything can justify the fact that it is $85. But I think that this is one of my, one of the best 360 games I've played in a while. And it is just balls to the wall insane. And I cannot recommend this game anymore of course do not pay the absurd price of 85 dollars like me if you can find a one in a in a thrift store or go and find one online that isn't really complete in box just regular sort of edition that's like going for like 40 bucks then i would highly recommend picking it up and playing with me like i said Gamer tag is in the comment section below but this game if i had to give it a rating i would give it a solid b it is a solid experience it is fun and I'm glad I played it and it was a really enjoyable time. What do you guys think? Do, have you guys ever played this game? And is it something that you truly enjoyed or is this a game that you kind of would have ran it at Blockbuster and just played for the weekend? Let me know in the comment section below. Uh, thank you guys for stopping by. Thank you guys 
for all the recent subscribers. I appreciate it. And uh, so if you like what you saw and you like to see more, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I'll be seeing you guys on the next one. And remember, take it easy.